Heyo everybody, Haku here with Every Therian Throat from Killing Bites Ranked. This is a project that I've worked on for a long time. Honestly, I made my notes on this and a lot of the graphics that I'm going to use, like edit into the video, kind of a couple months ago because I've been working on it for so long and I'm just now getting around to finally recording. So in the past like few new chapters, it's like, have my opinions really shifted that much? I don't know. Probably not really. This is also going to include the Therian Thropes from the Inabasan spinoff. So yeah, this is gonna be a weird one. Gonna be one of my oddest videos yet. I have five non-Therian Thropes to just talk about really quick at the beginning and then probably, you know, towards the lower end of the list, there's not too much about to say about some of the characters. So I'm probably gonna speed run a little bit uh, of the earlier entries. But yeah, I hope you're interested in more Killing Bites content. This is just going to be based on like how much I like the character as a whole. Not really based on like what kind of Therian Thrope I would want to be. Because now that I think about it, I think a canine type thing would be cool. If we, if we can't use ones that have already been used in the series, maybe like a maned wolf or a coyote or something. Or you could go bat because then you're like a mammal, but you can also still fly and you could have like cool bat sonic stuff. That one might be a good one too to go with. It's also not going to be a, a top waifu kind of thing, but I could always talk about that later, if, if that's something that anybody wanted. Another thing that I should probably say right quick before I really get started is, you know, content warning that Killing Bites is a seinen. It is a series with some darker themes, and a lot of the characters are really bad people. I'm probably going to call a lot of them the R word ist, the, the P version, not the C version. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube anymore. Probably going to call a lot of characters that. Also, I'm not going to say how that'll affect the ranking. I'm probably going to be a hypocrite here and there, but it is my list. I'm interested in what anybody else's list is though, so hit me with yours down below in the comments if you want to. But either way, I said I needed to, just to cover all the characters or whatever, bring up five you know, kind of more prominent ones that aren't Therian Thropes. There's Oshie-chan, who is cute and funny, just used for, like, gags at, like, the end of volumes or chapters or whatever. Uh, neat little intro, <laughs> neat little, like, um, character to have in the story actually is around for more important things than you would think. Uh, there's also the Yatsubishi Ishin Zaibatsu guy. Uh, I think he's a really neat villain. I think he's a pretty cool antagonist, so I'm cool with him. Uh, there's Mitsukado Yoko, who I really thought the mangaka was doing, like, more with. I was like, it'd be really cool if she ends up being, like, a lioness, if we find out that she went ahead and got made into a Therian trope. Uh, but nothing like that yet, so I don't really know what's going on with her at this point in the series, but I do like her. There's, um, Soichi Rei, or no, Reichi Soto? Which, which is it? It's Reichi Shido, the uh, main scientist guy. Look, I don't know what the mangaka is doing with him. I don't know if we're supposed to like him. I don't know if he's on some sort of redemption arc, but I've never liked the guy. Always gave me bad vibes. Always also just disliked him in the story. Dislike, uh, it really, to me, lowers Hitomi's character, the way she's so obsessed with him. I don't like the guy. And then lastly, there's Sarah Sohn, who, like, I think she's a good guy. I mean, hey, she's a she's a kind of milfy, mature female character. I really like her design. I thought it'd be neat if she did more. Again, I have no idea what her point in the story is at this point, uh, but I do also like her. But with all of those out of the way, let's just, I, I guess, let's finally get into ranking all the Therian tropes from worst to best. The worst, number 61, is Urihata Ushio, the red-billed buffalo weaver, and, you know, he's just weird, he's not much of a character, and to me, I always think that boring is usually worse than bad, so for him to be just a nobody character, he's just one of the random guys that's in the Inaba-san spinoff, just for Inaba to be like, whoa, animal dick, and then that, that's kind of all he's here for. 60 is the walrus Todoroki Seichi, and honestly, he showed up in the main series, and it's like, okay, he's just kind of a loser who's going to lose in the fights or whatever, and that was all his character was, but then he gets devalued even more because he shows up in the Inaba-san spinoff, and immediately is kind of like 
just immediately chapter one kind of rapey and I'm like wow this guy is even a bigger loser than he was in the main series so yeah this guy just kind of sucks 59 is Brute Octopus, Sobochi Okto. I don't even know whether to call some of them Brute, because I don't know if it fits if they're not like actual fighters. But yeah, kind of second verse, same as the previous two. He just kind of sucks. He's like creepy, he's bad, he has an ugly design, and he gets punked by Leo, who is like a walking L. So he gets punked by a punk, and it's, it's sad to see. So yeah, one of the biggest losers in Killing Bites. I mean, actually, now that I think about it, he does have a girlfriend, though, at least at some point, so, you know, maybe he isn't as big a loser as some of the others. 58 is Amamiya Zenzaburo, the frog, and, you know, we're kind of on a roll with similar things here. Lame designs who are kind of creepy people who you don't really like at all in the series. I think he's higher than the other ones, though, because at least he is in, like, the main series and plays an interesting role in the main series, so I will give him that edge over the past few, but yeah, he still just kind of sucks. 57 is Ginzo Watari, the penguin who just <laughs> literally shows up to get one shot. That is the only role he plays in the story whatsoever, and I guess he's this high up because he's He's not a rapist, I guess. I guess. I guess that's about where we're at with these characters. Uh, so again, the bar is still incredibly low at this point. We are on the lower end of ranking all of them. Next up, I put the chameleons, and I'll be real, these aren't even really characters. We didn't really see, like, anything out of them, pretty much, except a little bit at the end of the first arc. We don't even know who they are outside of being chameleons, but... They get points for looking cool. They're up here because they look cool despite pretty much not even really being characters. 55th is the Moose em Emilian Hjornov, and Moose are kind of cool. Like, Moose in reality could just destroy most things. They are absolutely massive and terrifying, but he only shows up to lose to Leo, who I mentioned earlier, is a massive walking L. So it's like, you lose to Leo, who chapter one gets destroyed, basically almost exclusively takes L's from then on out. And I think to myself, wow, you're losing to this guy? Like, I feel like the mangaka, if they wanted to hype up Leo, they really did it the wrong way because Leo to me is completely devalued like first chapter. So anytime after that he does anything cool or anyone loses to him, I'm like, wow, they were lamer than Leo. So uh, yeah, it's kind of sad that Moose almost got wasted in that kind of way. In 54th place is the Chinchilla Onari Sugita. And this is a little bit of a rough one as well. I mean, I guess you can't blame him for the self-love. But, and his design's kind of okay. He's not rapey, but he is also kind of still paying to go to a place and handle himself in front of people. Uh, so he is still very odd. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like he's not the worst. I, I feel like the bar, the bar is so low still. 53rd place is Brute Jaws Samajima Dango, and this guy is, again, not awful, but also just constantly bringing L's upon himself, so I can't really hype him up that much. Again, he's a character who doesn't really do much in the story besides lose, but again, he's in the main story, he's not a complete creep, and uh, his design's okay. So, you know, I think he passes the low bar pretty well. 50, 50, 52nd place is another weird one. Sorry, I'm trying to hold it together. It's Wallaby Uekarame Sen. And uh, he seems like a nice enough guy. Very weird fetish. I mean, at first, like, reading, you might think, wow, he's kind of a jerk. But, you know, I think he just has a very odd fetish. Uh, again, not horrible. 51st place, I might actually be underrating. We have the pig, Mazono Takama. He is just living his own life. He is doing his thing. Uh, you can't really blame him. He has his interests. He's interested in what he's interested in. Uh, he is in the 
uh, Inaba-san spinoff for the reasons that you think he would be. And uh, yeah, just Pigma male crime set. He is, I, I'm cool with him. I thought that he was actually more on the funny side. I can't really fault him for much. Uh, you know, fine. Number 50, breaking into our top 50 is the bar. The bar's still on the ground, guys. Uh, it's Ino Shinji, the boar, who seemed cool, designs neat enough, just got completely wrecked by Gecko, and that's pretty much all that happened. But what I'm noticing going through all of this is, uh, and like reminding myself of these characters, is the designs and artwork in this series are really, really great. Uh, but yeah, bar's still incredibly low. It's a, it's a very light character. 49 is the gorilla, or Yabe Shota, who was, you know, he's an OG. He was in the first arc. <laughs> but he's kind of an he's kind of an idiot. He's kind of dumb. Because he knew about Kido. He knew about Kido and still, you know, got what happened to him. So, <laughs> I have to think he's not the brightest at all. Also, he just wasn't the coolest among that group. Like, I would say, you know, spoilers for future in the list. Crocodile was much cooler. But either way, uh, yeah, not much to say still. I don't know if number 48 is going to be contentious or not, but I'm putting Brute Leo. I'm putting Tani Yugo, who the mangaka, like, in the manga, keeps trying to hype up and tell us he's so cool. He's like this grand warrior and everything, but I just don't see it. This guy is a rapist. On top of that, he has to pay for sex. On top of that, he's a loser. He loses chapter one. And then after chapter one, he continues to just lose almost all of the time. He's just a walking L for Leo. He, I, I've said it multiple times earlier in the video, but this guy just can't stop losing. He just can't stop looking lame. He just can't stop being completely laughable. To me when compared to like anybody he's put up against even he beats moose and i'm like wow they kind of wasted moose he makes octopus look bad and i'm like wow this guy's really lame if he's looking bad compared to leo like my thoughts on this guy are just so in the dirt and i feel like in more recent chapters he has gotten better but that's only if you only look at those recent chapters and forget the entirety of the series before then when this dude's win loss record is immaculately bad like we're told we keep being told that oh yeah he's a champion he wins all this stuff but we never see it aside from beating moose we just see him lose all the time and look so bad all the time number 47 is yumimori honki the tapir and you know honestly for somebody who was just one of the characters who shows off to, or like shows up to be in a chapter of the inaba-san spinoff Honestly, he was sort of well-developed for that one chapter. They actually had a little bit more of a story going on, a personality and character conflict going on, than just animal cock. But it is what it is. Also, his design's pretty neat. You know, maybe, maybe feminine enough to be in my strike range. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, he was okay. For what he was in the series, I did not, I did not hate him. I, I like, why, why are we at 47 and that's still where I am? It's like, I didn't hate him. Number 46 is another one kind of in a similar situation as the last, the Echidna Harimoto Kurodo. And honestly, he was just, I felt bad for him. He was just trying to live his life. Both felt bad for him because he was just trying to live his life. And I mean, he got the Inaba uh, and Rasuku, was that her name? The Anaba and Rasuku special, like, he, he, luck, he kind of lucked out here. So, I mean, also, good for him. Number 45 is Armadillo. Uh, he died like the other members of his team, I think. I think they're dead, probably. But, uh, it's hard to tell in Killing Pipes, because some people, with the technology they have, they survive some crazy stuff. And, uh, also, just, Therianthropes are pretty resilient. But, it... If, you know, he and the rest of the team died. He at least died fighting. I can give him that, you know. Uh, so, you know, points points for that, I guess. 44 is Komodo Dragon for kind of, kind of the same reason. Kind of the same reason as Armadillo, except, you know, a cooler design. And now that I'm thinking about some of these in this list, I'm like, wow, they, they kind of wasted the concept, the idea of a Komodo Dragon and what could have been done with it in the story, don't you think? 
But uh, yeah, that's all I got for 44. That's all I got for the Komodo dragon. What am I supposed to say? 43 is polar bear for kind of the same reason as the last two, only once again, just the coolest of the three. But also, also polar bears are like absolutely monstrous. It does feel like we wasted a little bit of potential here, but I guess it was to show off the, you know, danger of the situation. But yeah, either way, that's kind of all I got for that trio. They're kind of in the middle area of all of this because we got through characters that were just nothing or I didn't like that much and then we have these characters who were also kind of nothing but they had good designs they had sort of you know something noble about them uh, and I feel like from here we might maybe start moving on into like actual characters for 42nd place I put Shina Agito or the alligator or the dino succus uh either way actually actually with the end of the last chapter he might get to come back and play a more important role for all that I know but he's just kind of all rightish a part of me just doesn't like him a part of me wants to be a hater I want to be a hater so bad but honestly he's kind of all rightish I'm just happy he lost his match uh because I was really really root maybe I'm not happy I was really rooting for Yui, but then seeing what happens after that, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I shouldn't have been, but maybe she's still all right, probably. Um, so yeah, he's just kind of all right-ish. I liked him well enough. Even though I want to be a hater, he's fine. In 41st place is Ai Zhen Wang, the panda, and she was pretty fun. I think the random introduction out of nowhere, the fight was pretty good. Uh, the design, the like comedy gag that it turns out Panda was a woman, all of it was fine. We just barely saw any of her. It's like what we saw was good. The reason she's down so low is that we just barely saw any of her. But she is pretty good. I like her. Breaking into our top 40, we have the octopus Taco Natsumi. And she's kind of going off design and going off the role that she played in the Inaba-san spinoff. Because she's just pretty okay there. I'll give her that. She's pretty okay. Uh, I don't completely hate her. I mean, in the main story, she is kind of messed up for, you know, dating a creep and going along with that plan and everything. But uh, I don't know. I just don't completely hate her. I think the uh, Inaba-san spinoff and her just being generally friendly to Inaba just kind of had me soften on her a bit. So I, I don't hate her, but she's pretty okay. Design's nice. In 39th place, I put Arimori Go, the anteater. I don't know. He's he's kind of a loser in some ways, but I think his design's cool enough. He's like on the precipice of being more around the main group of characters. He's pretty okay. He's just pretty solid. I do think that the writing with him and the treatment of um uh was it Nodoka and everything was kind of eh, but that's kind of outside of the character. I think he's pretty fine as a character. In 38th place, I put the Rhino Sinotepe, which is kind of a weird situation because he's first introduced and has the fight with Tasuku, and he's kind of lame there. He kind of sucks there, but then after that, he's pretty good. He's a solid character after that, I think. He's just somebody who's kind of around to be a jobber, take some losses, uh, but I certainly don't hate him. I think he plays his role fair enough. 37th place is Squirrel, and I mean, honestly, she's kind of, she, she, she's for the, for the, for the parks, um, yeah, I, it, at least she owns it, at least she's, she, hey, she's getting her money, she's, uh, doing what she's gotta do to get her money, to get what she wants to get, her design's pretty nice, but, uh, you know, maybe not for me, yeah, a little, a little intimidating there. But uh, yeah, either way, she can put, putting her in 37th this is a, a weird one to talk about. So I'm actually going to lump 35 and 36 together, and I'm also going to lump in the two other horse girls in there, because I took the notes for this back when we hadn't been introduced to all four of the, of the horse girls yet. Uh, they're pretty good, they're pretty attractive, characters are fine, and you know, of course they're like an Uma Musume uh, parody. I just think they're pretty okay. I do wish for some of these types of characters that we kind of got more of them in like a character sense or more in the main story. I just think though, like I said, basic thoughts on all the horses, I'll lump them all together. Uh, attractive designs, fine characters, though, you know, for what they were being used for in the story, you, you, <laughs> you get what you get. Uh, 
But yeah, they were just sort of alright. In 34th place, I put the horned lizard Kishimoto Akimi, who... I watched the anime first. I watched the anime and then I read the manga, so she was portrayed way different. In the manga, she does essentially nothing, but in the anime, she kind of has a weird but cool portrayal, uh, so I kind of bumped her up a bit because of that, even though she's barely in the manga. She's this high because of the anime and because she's, like, kind of neat. I kind of wish that she did actually get fleshed out as a character in the manga, but again, it is what it is. 33rd place is the bulldog Busujima Gantotsu, and he just seems like a good guy doing his job. Nothing to hate about him. I respect our boy. 32nd place is Brute Rowdy, or Porcupine, I guess, I think that's what that is, Arashina Ryoko, and let me tell you, neurons are activating, she was, she was attractive, I like the design quite a bit, don't know how that would work, she's very spiky, but yeah, I generally like her, it would have been neat to see more, but sadly we didn't get to see more, or at least we haven't so far, and she's one of those characters that showed up early on, and I feel like has been kind of forgotten about by now. 31st place is Hongo Jerome, the brute bear, and he is actually really, really cool. He's pretty cool. I like him. I think he had a pretty neat backstory, and his design in the manga is so cool. In the anime, like, you know, things were simplified a little bit because of, you know, having to make it into an anime, uh, but in the manga, he looks so cool. Uh, so yeah, I just generally really like him, but he's not as involved a character and not a character that I really like as much uh, to make it into the top 30. 30th place is the Cobra Onuma Den, and actually he was kind of a horrible person at first. I kind of hated him at first, but despite that, he kind of like... I don't know if it's a redemption arc necessarily, but he kind of reforms himself a bit as a person and becomes pretty solid as a supporting character in the later arcs. So I'm actually kind of pretty cool with him now, and I think it's neat that they took such a detestable character from the first arc and just kind of repurposed him to be a solid supporting character. 29th place is Tiger or Nakanishi Taiga, and he suffers from a similar problem to Leo, where we're just told that he's cool, we're told that he's cool, but he barely ever actually gets to do anything cool, he loses most of the time. Uh, so because of all that, it's like harder to take him as seriously as some of the female characters who actually win here and there. Um, but his design's pretty solid, it's pretty okay, I kinda like him well enough. I think he's a very funny character. I both dislike his obsession with Leo, because it feels like he's too intrinsically tied to Leo as a character, um, and Leo just drags everybody around him down as a character. But I also find it funny, and a lot of the segments, I love the segment where he's laying in the hospital bed, and we have the radio saying something about Leo losing or whatever, and then the next panel is him just doing Undertaker sit-up. I think it's hilarious. Uh, that's one of my favorite panels, one of my favorite pages, because I'm pretty sure it's a two-page spread in the entire series. It's so funny. A lot of the cuts we have to Tiger are just so funny. Like, something else will be going on, and we just hard cut to Tiger reacting to something. It's so good. Uh, so he is, he's a fun character. 28th place is the crocodile Shina Ryuji, and he is actually just really cool. His design is cool looking, his character was really cool, and honestly, I just didn't really see him as that bad. Like, I didn't see him as like a horrible, horrible person like some of the others. I mean, you know, the morality scale in Killing Bites is a little off, but I thought he was fine. I, I just thought he was cool. 27th place for me might also ruffle a few feathers. It's Nomota Yuya Crow. And honestly, his design, his transformation is pretty cool. The idea of it being a crow is really cool. Uh, time, time though to play a little game here. The game is called Is It Blackface? I'm just gonna leave you with that one. Uh, but also, I think the reason why he's so low for me is his relationship with Hitomi sometimes is good and sometimes is really not. Sometimes I'm really not a fan of his relationship with Hitomi. Uh, mostly, it's mostly Hitomi's fault, even though I'm putting her higher than him because of her obsession with uh, Shido. But still, I don't know. I don't hate him. I, In fact, the fact that he's this high up says that I like him. Uh, but 
Yeah, it's, he's just in a weird situation for me as a character, but we'll have to see how the rest of the story plays out. 26th place just outside of the top 25 is Arakuma Rasuku the Raccoon, and she is this high up because, I mean, I love her style. The, like, nice, simple, pure style is very nice, but then pairing that with hands that could start a sex cult, it's like, you know, I'm intrigued, I'm interested. So, uh, yeah, I'd, she is this high up mostly for, you know, cool design and horny reasons. 25th place for me is actually Igawa Chiyomatsu, the giraffe. I really like the giraffe. His design is pretty cool. He gets to play a pretty cool role in the story, and he's just the giraffe that Kaku wishes he could be. I like this guy. I, I really genuinely actually like the giraffe. 24th place is the Tamanjua Arimori Tomo, and honestly, when I first saw her, when I first saw her design hanging out with the other characters we were getting introduced to, I was like, oh, she looks really cool. She's going to be a character who is like older, but has this small petite design. And boy, was I wrong. Still cute, still funny and all. But uh, yeah, not exactly what I expected to see out of her character. I kind of wanted more, to be honest. Uh, again, she's this high up because she's adorable. I, I actually really still love her design, but I kind of do wish that she could have been taken more seriously somehow. I don't know how. Maybe it turns out that she's some crazy uh, prodigy fighter and she's just really good at killing bites. I I don't know. I just wanted to see more personally. And maybe we, maybe we will. Maybe she'll just be punching dinosaurs left and right in the dino apocalypse. What do I know? In 23rd place, I put the Bobcat Maratha Deshi. I think she has a really cool and cute design. I love the fact that instead of just being a throwaway, she was a recurring character. I think that's a really good use for the character and all. My only disappointment, I put in my notes, I was like, I, I kind of wish she got a little bit more serious time in the story. And oh boy, do I perhaps regret that, because she may or may not be dead, but again, if we don't see a body, I'm assuming she's still alive. Maybe she's gonna catch a couple dinosaur bodies for all I know. Maybe that's a bit of cope from me, but, but either way, uh, next up in 22nd place, I have Hyodo Sylvester, the Snow Leopard, and honestly, he is a rare case of a really well-designed uh, male therianthrope. His design's, like, really good. He had a good backstory. He had a good fight. Just everything surrounding the character was good. It was well done. I've got no complaints whatsoever. It's just that, like, again, he only had his one fight, and compared to that, there are other characters that are just, you know, more important, more key to the series, that I personally like more. 21st place for me was the sloth slash megatherium Uzaki Noroka. I think that Noroka's character concept was really, really good. It was a very good idea but the execution of Noroka's character was maybe not that good. I don't like the execution that much. I don't think they did as good a job with Noroka as they could have, but still, still she was pretty solid. I think especially the design I really liked. I do think that the fight was good. I just think that maybe she should have been used more. Maybe it should have been built up or dragged out more. Uh, it just seemed like maybe all of it happened a little too fast for me. But maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. I, I, like, have you been watching this so far? Do you think I know what I'm talking about? Except for I like anime girls that transform into animals and have big booba. Like, do you really think that my head is really that advanced right now? Uh, but yeah, either way, she was good. 20th place for me is the Mole Moganami Ray, and what is better than a big booba anime girl? That's right, one with a penis, even better. She is uh, really, 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 really great in that sense. I, uh, yeah, you know, this is a thirsty pick for me. Very thirsty pick for me. Uh, she's very attractive. She was in the Nabasan spinoff. And, uh, yeah, you know, everything I look for <laughs> in Killing Bites. What, 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 do I, what do I have to say? 19th place was the fox Shinozaki Mai. Uh, I like her character. I like her backstory, even though it was a little bit confusing at first. I think that she's cool and mysterious, and just being a fox is cool in general. I mean, that's a good, good choice. Good choice. I mean, not that the people actually get to choose, but you get my point. Uh, good choice on the mangaka's part. But yeah, she's 
pretty nice. The only thing I don't like about her is that she does work for Shido, and I don't like the guy. Uh, in addition to that, I feel like her face in her transformed state is still a little too human for me. Go for the longer snoot. Make her... <laughs> why am I saying make her more of a furry? Make her more of a furry. Go for it. Uh, I think that would make her character even better. But uh, yeah, we all know what happened to her. Probably. Again, it's killing bites. At any point, they could just go, ha, she's alive, so what do I know? 18th place is the Civet Rikujo Kaori, and she was a great pre-time skip. I really liked her in the first arc. The thing is, though, where, where'd she go? Where'd, where'd she go? We see these other characters from the first arc show up in the sort of post time skip, uh, but we don't see her. She's kind of the missing link. There was no civet again, which I'm really disappointed in because I'm pretty sure she came out of the first arc perfectly fine. So I would have liked to have seen more of her. I would still like to see more of her. Uh, I, again, it feels like with the Dino Apocalypse, the series may be coming to an end, but I would be totally happy to be wrong for us to get another time skip, for us to jump into a new main character and see some new stuff, uh, for the series to just continue on. I am a guy who, to me, endings are pretty much always kind of meh, not really good, so I don't care if a series doesn't end or if it just ends because it's like, ah, eh, the mangaka doesn't want to write it anymore. I'm cool. Give me a good beginning and just keep giving me good story to read chapter to chapter. Just give me more chapters. I don't care about an ending. People are always like, oh, but what about how our series ends? I don't care. I don't care about the ending. I just want something good to read at the moment because endings, even when they're planned out in advance, usually don't land anyway. So it's like, who cares? 17th place is Satorina the Siberian. Give me more. I want more. I just, I want more of her. I'm just waiting. I like her character so far. She seems like a really nice person. Uh, there's a little bit more going on with her, like, wanting to compete, but also her being a member of the, uh, one idol group whose name I'm forgetting. I thought it was an AKB48, um, reference. It's not AM48 because that's Manmusu. I don't remember what they called them, but she was a part of that. Uh, I'm just constantly, she's one of the, I made the joke about uh, Ghetto in my Jujutsu Kaisen review where it's like, I'm just waiting for them to do something. 16th place is the brute pongaling Kido Takashi, and he had such a great backstory and villain psychology. The psychology behind him and the things he was doing was just so well done, and he was excellent as a real sort of on the ground villain for the first arc where he was just this impossible challenge for the characters he was something that nobody could really stand up to he just was handled so 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 well as a villain i think he was really good and i i don't even know if i want to call him a villain even as an antagonist he was the on the ground opposing force um but even then it's like i don't know if i'd say that he was an absolutely horrible person uh, but he was very, very well written. 15th place is the Dino Nike Suzaki Koyomi, and honestly, because I took these notes a few months ago, I do feel like I'm underrating her. I think she's a really, really good villain so far, but she's not even really a villain. She's a victim in all of this. And I think that makes her even deeper as a character. Her design is also very, very, very good. She's <laughs> dangerous, Shogakse. I really uh i really enjoy and like her character a lot i'm interested to see the direction that the series is going to take i kind of feel like she should be redeemed and saved from the situation she's in but also there's kind of the idea that maybe she can't be maybe she's too far gone uh maybe pure can save her but maybe cure just has to defeat her it is a really interesting situation that the characters put in and just shows how well written she is 14th place is the original main character herself, the Brute Rattle, Uzaki Hitomi. I really do like her character a lot still. It frustrates me a lot, her obsession with Shido, but we know how it gets there. We know why. It just still frustrates me because I don't like the guy. And that kind of knocks her character down a bit. I mean, for her to be the, the original main character, 14th place really isn't all that high. Uh, but her design is really, really great. They go like she was one of the first i think anime you know more muscular beefy girls that i got to see in anime all those years ago when the anime first came out uh, and her design's great in that sense they really give her some crazy thighs in the manga 
Um, her character, though, her overall story, I think, has been very good. She's just down this low because there are other characters that I really like, that I like a lot more. And then when Pure comes along, when Pure becomes the new main character, it is just like... I didn't know what I was missing. To me, he told me he's like, oh, she's a solid main character. But when we started the second arc, when we got Pure as the main character, I was like, Pure is who I'm really rooting for. She's who I'm really cheering for. Pure is just like, not that uh, Hitomi's bad. Pure's just such a good main character that it kind of knocks Hitomi down a bit more. Um, also, there have been so many fights where I'm kind of rooting for the other person other than Hitomi, which is a little bit sad. But uh, either way, I do still really love her. It's just that other characters have surpassed her for me. 13th place is the Brute Kangaroo, Lambert Ogata. I really like him, and I did not expect to like him this much. I think that he is a very fun character. I love him as Haiji's hype man, and the kind of, honestly kind of odd relationship they've built where Haiji seems kind of cool with him now. I, I kind of like his and Haiji's relationship. I think it's really, really good, actually. Again, he's a character that I showed up and I thought much like, what is it, Arimori Go, he would be just some random nobody, but he just showed so much more personality and was so much more fun as a character. 12th place is the Gekko Kazuma Kaede, and honestly, she's just really cool. She's taken seriously. She delivers good fights. I really have no complaints. Like, that's pretty much it. She delivers good story content. She delivers good fights. Uh, her design is good. She's taken seriously as a fighter, and it's really cool. I, I guess, yeah, everything about her is just good. 11th place, just shy of the top 10, is the Brute Wolf, Ogami Riku, who is another really cool character. I like him in the story. I love him on commentary during the most recent arc. In the extras, he's really fun as well. Uh, he has a deeper character, too, with a lot of connections to some of the stuff that happened in the past. Overall, he's just, to me, a really good character. Plus, wolves are cool. Who knew? Like, who knew? Wolves are cool. 10th place is the Brute Hippopotamus. Okajima Ichinosuke, the waifu slayer himself. I really like him. He fought really hard in the destroyal. He's been there kind of since the beginning, and he just feels like this noble, honorable warrior. He might be Dino Chow now, actually, but I don't know. He's just really, really cool, and he kept shocking me. He kept surprising me. Again, the waifu slayer. I kept saying, oh, yeah, well, obviously this character is going to win this round. Obviously this character is going to win this round, and he was busting my bracket. He was being a shock all along the way, winning his fights. Uh, so again, he, unlike Leo and Tiger, just takes Ws. W Hippopotamus. He, uh, he puts on good fights, he wins his fights, and he, like, instead of being a creepy rapist guy, like a lot of these guys in Killing Bites, he is like this cool, noble, honorable warrior. He's so cool. In ninth place, that's so Meshuma TV. It is Okawa Yui the Otter. I love her. I thought that she was just coming in like Snow Leopard to be this new character introduced for the tournament who's just gonna get destroyed, just gonna immediately lose, but then... She actually wins. She is actually really cool. She actually has a really cool backstory. She has a cool character. She's fun. Her design is good. Like, she really shocked me in being so great. In eighth place is the Tasmanian Devil, Kuroi Tasuku. She is the sort of archetypal delinquent but with a heart of gold and she is really really cool i mean really bad taste in tattoos to be honest but she just ended up being a really cool really awesome character who delivered a lot of great moments her catching that attack in her mouth that time i think we've seen it since i think uh hitomi might do it later on but when that first happened when i first saw that I was blown away. That is still one of the most memorable moments in the entire series to me. And her full transformation form, to me, is still one of the coolest forms that we've ever seen. I think her full transformation form, that is a top waifu for me. She is so, so cool. And uh, I really, really miss her. Seventh place is the Ibex Goto Haiji, and she is actually, she is quite literally the GOAT. She puts on the best fights, like, every time. All of the Haiji fights are so good. Like, she first showed up, and I'm like, compared to some of the other characters, her design isn't really as, like, 
unique. It's not as cool. But then she just kept delivering again and again. She was so cool. There's so many cool moments with her powers and everything, too, that are insane. Her win over Hitomi was absolutely nuts. I was losing my mind with her in the Hitomi fight. And then, right after that, and even right before that, we have the fight with Gecko, right? And then later on after that, or directly after the Hitomi fight, we have the pure fight, I think. I think those two were back to back. And the pure fight is so good. Again, she just delivers. She is so good. And like I mentioned it earlier, I actually love her relationship with Lambert Ogata. That's really fun too. Okay, so my choice for sixth place is one that feel free to call me out for. It's Salamander Hanzaki Moe. I think her story and character is really cool. I think her design's really awesome. I just really, really like her. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't do that much more recently, but at least in like the second arc, she was really what was it? There was the destroyal and then the death the death devil. It was the death devil, I think, that she was really cool in. I liked her backstory a lot. She really is, to be fair, only there. Uh, it feels like a lot of the time for like Guru fetishists, which is something that I'm not into. I'm kind of even kind of against that. I blacklisted on most of the sites I look at uh, fan art on. But even then, I just, I like her a lot. I don't know. I like her character a lot. She just, she speaks to me. Number five is Brood Elephant Sahara Riho and uh, muscular, uh, dark skin, oh, big. Uh, it's like everything just bombarding me. I'm like, oh my god, yes, best, best girl, best girl. I really like her in a serious sense, too. Not just a ooh, waifu sense, but she's seriously also a really good character. Her recent fight with Pure was very good. Um, again, more than like fight choreography, like some of the previous fights, it was more story heavy, emotion heavy. I think that it's been very good. I would like to see more of her character wise, but I think that she's played a really nice role in the story too. Um, I'd like to see more of her and Inaba's relationship develop and, um, see what more we can get out of that as well. So yeah, uh, overall, just a really great character, which is why she's top five. Fourth place for me is probably top waifu. If I had to pick one girl from Killing Bites to be like best girl, I probably would pick Brute Cheetah, Nakanishi Yeruza. Uh, her design is so cool, especially her like full, like complete form design, I think is really, really awesome. Um, on top of that, I just think that she has had such a cool growth from the beginning when we first see her in the series to all the things that she goes through from there. I think more than most other characters, more than Hitomi even, the growth of Nakanishi Yerza is insane to me. And her fight against Leo is absolute insanity. That was so good. And then going in from that into the fight with Hippo, was just shocking. I did not expect that to go the way it did. I I honestly don't know if I expected either to go the way they did, but she's just really cool and has a really cool story. In third place is the greatest comedic relief, and also if, I mean, hey, if we're to look at the spinoff Other Relief, uh, Inaba Ui, the Brute Rabbit, she is a really fun character. I love her comedic relief, especially in the, you know, post time skip where she has the goofy suit, she's on commentary. All of this stuff with her post time skip is hilarious. She is such a funny character. And even the spinoff, even though I said it is just her going, whoa, whoa animal dicks. Um, it still is. It's still fun for what it is. It's still funny for what it is. Uh, so yeah, kind of a weird one, but I do like her a lot. I think she's a very funny character, and the series really wouldn't be quite the same without her. Our runner-up is the Beagle, Inui Pure, the new main character. I love her so much. She is such a good main character. When she took over, again, I didn't know that I needed this. She just really elevated the series for me. I think her story and her development is probably the best in the series, and another reason why she's so good is or so good as the main character, is she serves as a really good main character with a really good story, but she also doesn't distract 
from the subplots of the side characters around her, which is such a cool thing for a main character. Uh, her design is good. I never expected Beagles to be so hype. The author, the mangaka, must love Beagles because he puts so much attention into just hyping her up and hyping Beagles up. She's so cute. She's funny comedically. She has a good design. Her fights are good. Her fights are so cool. Everything about her is just so good as a main character. And number one, my favorite therianthrope, is the hyena, Hibujiana. Call me, call me a hypocrite, because she is also kind of rapey. But I, I can fix her. I can fix her. I, again, am down bad. She is a very fun character to me. She's kind of evil. She is a, she's a very bad person. But I, sometimes, like, when I'm, one of my favorite characters, maybe my favorite One Piece character, is Doflamingo, if that tells you anything. Sometimes, as good and well-written as the good guy characters are, sometimes characters are just complete jerks. You would think that they were a monster in real life. But in the sort of vein of a manga or something, it's like, wow, they are a really entertaining shitty person. And that's Haibuchiana. She is so entertaining to me. I think that she is so creative. They they gave her the hyena pseudo penis, and I was like, oh wow, that's that honestly is part of what got me to start reading the manga. I was like, wow, that's wild. Um, but then sometimes it's questionable because, like with the backstory and stuff, it seemed like she also has it in human form, and also it might just be an actual penis. And like that's less unique to me. I mean, I guess canon futa is unique enough. But, I don't know, I, I kind of like it just being a hyena transformation thing. Um, but yeah, so, her design, probably my favorite design. I think that's why she's up here. I think she's kind of best girl. Um, she's an absolute horrible person, but I love whenever she's on screen. I'm like, oh my god, it's Aina, it's uh, Taibuchi Aina again. Uh, so yeah, that, that's where I am. She's she's the best character. She's my favorite Therian trope. Uh, thank you for sticking through this list. This might have been the weirdest, wildest, craziest video I have ever done. Uh, but I hope you had fun with it. I had I had fun with it. Um, God, I this may come back to haunt me because maybe some of the images I show on screen get me in trouble. It may come back to haunt me because people try to cancel me for my opinions on fictional characters. Um, but I just wanted to have fun with it. Wanted to show appreciation to a manga, to a series that I got into and found very fun. I just found Killing Bites. Again, so many of the characters are awful. There's some really crazy content in here, um, but I have just found it such a wild ride, so, so much fun. Uh, so I wanted to show some love to it and do a video like this. Uh, thank you so much for watching, though. Like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of my list. Tell me what your list is. I know I'm being a big hypocrite with that number one pick. Um, subscribe for more Killing Bites, much more on the channel. I haven't done a video yet on the most recent chapter, but I've been trying to do videos when I can. Um, Subscribe for that. Much, much more on the channel. There's a ton of things other than Killing Bites. Maybe, hopefully, we can get a season two someday. I'd love to see Pure and her adventures animated. Especially with the way that your general anime quality has gone up so high in the past few years. We could get something really cool. Um... So yeah, I'd love to see it animated again. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that. If you want to link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone. If you want to follow on Twitter, you can. We can talk there. Um... We can talk anywhere. Again, comments, Twitter, Discord, doesn't matter. If you want to help support the channel, you could drop a super thanks. It's like a super chat, like a donation, but for the comments, you could do that if you want to. It would be appreciated. It would help the channel. Or if you want to also get a little something more out of it yourself, uh, patrons and members, they get one piece a bit early. They get a shout out at the end of every single video. You could hit join down below to become a member. You could go to patreon.com slash the tubes to become a patron. Either way, help support the channel. Uh, so huge thank you if you do that. Thank you to people who are patrons and members. Thank you to Chosen Regular, Evan Holly, Magical Girls, Ephronon and Smeller Dog, Chariton Student, David Langstaff, Slayer Candidates, SG and Stance Eater, and Pure Element Pate Ardeal. Thank you all so, so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.